everybody, this is Justin Branham from MasterFiddle.com and you just heard our bluegrass licks in the key of G over a basic 1-4-5 progression. We took the same lick and put it over each chord and we've got a number of licks that we're going to learn in this lesson. And the point of this is to get you um, improvising using these licks that you can just plug in to two measures or uh, one of the licks is a four measure lick actually and they're all a little bit different just gives you some vocabulary that you can use when you're playing bluegrass and you can either take these and put them in a break where you're playing the melody and you want to get away from the melody for maybe two measures or let's say you don't know the melody maybe you just know part of it and you need some filler these are great for that or maybe you just want to take a big improvised bluegrass break and you need a lot of vocabulary because you're not going to reference the melody very much these are good for that too and you can mix them up and I'll talk more about that at the very end of the lesson all right let's take a look at that first lick this is over the G chord, I'm going to play the, the very first one over the G chord, it sounds like this. Of course, we're going to transpose that over the C chord, which is the 4 chord in this key, and over the D chord, which is the 5 chord in this key. Same thing, just transposing it to those chords. And um, what we have here with most of these licks is going to be kind of revolving around the basic chord tones of each chord. <clears throat> so. We have a G chord, the chord tones are G, B, and D. Okay, that's the root, third, and fifth of the chord. Those are the notes that are part of the chord, and if we play those notes, it's always going to sound good against the chord. Now, the notes that are part of the G scale, and since we're in the key of G and we're playing over a G chord, we would use a G scale to play over that and connect those chord tones. Those notes are all going to have different amounts of color, and if we land on the notes that are part of the scale but not part of the basic chord, they're going to kind of color the sound one way or the other. And some are going to sound more consonant, meaning that they sound um, good to our ears, and some are going to sound more dissonant, meaning they create tension to our ears. And some are kind of in the middle. But when we play scale notes and we go from one chord tone to the next, they kind of operate more as a passing tone. So that tension is very brief and it gives us kind of a bridge from one note to the next. So for instance, if I were to go from D down to B with a C note, that's one way I could use the notes of the G scale with a C note being the fourth note of the scale to move from D to B. So a lot of these licks are going to have that kind of movement. That's really common in fiddle tunes and there are certain types of scale movement that we see a lot in fiddle tunes. I'll, I'll try to point that out as we learn these licks, but that's mainly what we're going to be dealing with. Sometimes we'll have some chromatic notes that'll pop up, and that just means notes that are not in the scale of whatever chord we're playing over. So this first lick is all in the scale, and it starts out with four G notes. The first measure is four G notes. We'll start on the down bow, just go down, up, down, up, <clears throat> and it says second finger on the E string, a G note. And when you play that, you're going to want to accent each note uh, so that just means I'm going to dig in a little harder. And I'm also uh, using a little faster vibrato. And this is kind of the way that Kenny Baker would play a lick like this. He would hit maybe the same note over and over four times in a row and um, then play something after that. And this, this is not necessarily his lick exactly, but this is sort of the idea of it. So that's our first half. And then we're going to play this. So that second finger on the E string, the G note, open E. Three note slur here on a down bow. Third finger on the A string, a D note. First finger B, open A. And then third finger on the D string, a G note. Okay, so that was. And that covers two measures. All of these licks are gonna cover two measures. So anytime you have a song or tune that has two measures of G, you can plug that lick in right over those two measures. And there's a ton of songs in the key of G that will do that. Uh, or if it's a song in the key of D, the G chord would be the four chord. If it's a song in the key of C, the G chord would be the five chord. And this lick would work over four or five chords as well. It still can work, it doesn't really matter. It's not too specific that it can only work over the one chord. So that's our first lick and we're going to take the same thing and play it over the C chord and the fingerings are exactly the same, bowings are the same too. We just move it over to the A string now and start on the A string with our second finger on the A string on that C note. So everything is the same. Okay, so now we've got the first four measures of our chord sequence here with that same lick being played over both chords. So. Uh, 
Now, I wouldn't necessarily do that, but it's a good way to practice that lick. And you could even move it into other keys besides G and other chords besides just G, C, and D and play that anywhere you want to. And this fingering would work as a movable fingering if you don't play any open strings. So use your fourth finger for that E note um, on, on the G lick. And right here, I use my fourth finger for the A note. And I can move that up into different positions. All of these licks, some are easier to do that with than others, can be moved around into different keys that way. Okay, <clears throat> now over the D chord, we're going to have to use a different fingering, but the notes are the same. So, uh, same uh, relationship to the chord. So, we'll have this. Change the bowing a little bit to make it easier to bow that with the different fingerings and where the string crossings happen. So third finger on the A string on a D note, on a down bow. Hit that again. We're gonna slur two on an up bow here on the A string. First finger, a B note on the A string. Open A. Then second finger on the D string on an F sharp. This is a two note slur on a down bow. To first finger E to open D. just change the bowing to make that easier to play um, and again all these bowings are optional you don't have to do it like I've got it written out it just gives you a good starting point so now we've got it over G C D and then back to G and that'd be a good way to practice that so that you can play it over the main chords in the key of G of course you can move it and play it over any chord you want to um, those, that lick is pretty movable, and we've got a second finger version of the lick starting on the second finger and one starting on the third finger, which those are going to be the easiest ways to play that lick. Okay, now we're going to go to lick number two, which is kind of a, almost kind of a fiddle tune sort of lick. And over C. And over D. And then back to G. So two fingerings for this as well. Our fingering for G is gonna work over C and we'll have to learn a new one for D. Um, we're gonna start with a three note slur on a down bow on the E string. So that was four, three, two, B, A, G, all down. Then uh, fourth finger B on the E string, third finger A, second finger G, open E, first finger F sharp, second finger G, Open E, three note slur down here on the A string, third finger A string, a D note, first finger B, open A, and then third finger on the D string on an up bow here, uh, this is a G note. So. Okay, and this is a lick you hear all sorts of bluegrass fiddle players do. I describe it as kind of a fiddle tune sort of lick. Um, I can't think of a fiddle tune that has that specifically, but it functions the way a lot of fiddle tunes do where we sort of stair step down a scale. It's a scale pattern, descending scale pattern there. We're, we're starting out with that and then kind of getting away from it. So it's all just notes in the G scale and we keep revolving around those basic chord tones of G, B, and D. So that's why this works over a G chord. Now over the C chord, <coughs> we'll play the exact same fingerings. We're just gonna start on the A string instead. So it starts with fourth finger on the A string. Here it is. So same thing, we just moved it over to a lower string. And then over the D chord, we'll have to change the fingering. Okay, and uh, change the bowing just a little bit too. First finger on the E string, that's an F sharp on a down bow. Open E. And we're gonna slur three here on a down bow. Third finger on the A string, a D note. First finger on the E string, an F sharp. Open E. Then third finger on the A string, that's a D note. First finger B. Second finger C sharp here. I'll, I'll explain that in just a second. Third finger A string, a D note. First finger B. Open A, this is a down bow slur, four notes. Okay. I'm sorry, actually slurs uh, three notes, not four notes, slurs three notes. So that was open A, second finger D string and F sharp. 
first finger E, then open D on an up bow. Now why the C sharp? Well, to keep that pattern the same, so that the, the distance between the notes is the same as it was over G, we have to have that C sharp because in the um, G chord lick, that note is an F sharp and there's a half step there. If I change that to C, that still works and that actually is a better choice against that D chord because a C note would be the seventh, but because it's more of a passing tone instead of a landing tone, that note doesn't have a lot of importance and I think it, to my ear it sounds better to keep it as a C sharp so that it has more of the original character of the lick. So that C sharp can be used and that means that lick could also fit over a D major chord in the key of D where it functions as the one chord instead of as the five chord. It works either way. There's a lot of these fiddle tune type licks that have that sound of the uh, a raised, uh, in this case the C note against D is a raised seventh <clears throat> if we're thinking of it as a D chord. If we were thinking of that note in the key of G, just in the context of a G scale, that's the fourth note of the scale, and so that, that raised fourth note of a scale makes it a Lydian mode instead of a major scale, and that's a lot of theory stuff. You don't have to understand that to be able to use this lick. It just keeps it the same and has sort of a fiddle tune sound that way, so that's why I did that. Um, so that is over the five chord, and then we're back to G to finish out the sequence. <laughs> Of course, we could have played that down an octave and used that first finger fingering for the D uh, chord version of that lick and just moved it over to the A string, play the exact same thing over a string, and that would also fit over G because that's the B note as well, just down an octave. So that'd be. So there I just strung the two together in, in a different octave. Um, so always good to learn the lick in as many different octaves as you can, even if it's in the same key. All right, so that's lick number two. Let's take a look at look at <laughs> let's take a look at lick number three now. So we're gonna have and now we're getting out of just using the notes of the scale. We're playing some blue notes against the chord. That's the flat seven uh, of a G chord, F natural instead of F sharp. So that's not in the key of G, it's actually in the key of C, uh, but we're using it kind of, I would describe the use here as more of a blue note, meaning that it has a blue sound that it gives that line. So the line is second finger on the E string on a down bow, that's a G note. Third finger A, a D note. Low first finger F natural, open E. Third finger on the A string, a D note. Slur two here, this is second finger on the A string, a C note, uh, slur two on an up bow. While you slur, you're gonna go to the first finger B note and uh, slide into that note. Okay. And then third finger on the D string, a G note, to second finger F natural. So. Just like all the others, this fits over two measures. So if you have a two measure um, spot to fill uh, behind a vocalist or in your solo, or you're playing the melody, whatever, this would be a great lick to insert. Because it has that flat seven in it, you could also use this in the key of C over the G chord in that key where it functions as the five chord. And that flat seven is gonna have a transitional sound where it wants to pull to the one chord again. So when we hear that flat seven, it can go, Two different ways it, it can either be more of a blue note sound where we are drawing from the blue scale that was the blue scale i just played or where it's more like part of the chord and it functions to pull us even more back to the one chord i played a g7 arpeggio and then went back to c so that's the two ways that i would think of using that note here to me it sounds more like a blue note because we're using it over the one chord I'm going to do the same thing over C now, same fingerings, we just start on the A string instead, and then we'll have to change our fingerings to fit over the 5 chord, once again there's kind of a pattern here isn't there, we're going to have the same thing, but different fingerings, so we start with the 3rd finger on the A string, a D note, open A, Second finger C natural on the A string. First finger B, open A. Slur two on an up bow here on the D string. This is third finger G. 
slur into an F sharp. Uh, I'm slide into an F sharp now while you're on that slur. Open D. And then third finger on the G string on a C, nat a C natural note. Okay, so that fits over our five chord there. So now we've got. Just to get our sequence finished out. Um, of course, you don't have to practice it that way, but that gives you a way to play that lick over one, four, and five, like we've been doing. Okay, now we're gonna get a little more chromatic here, and we're gonna have this lick that uses more of the blues scale. Okay, and we'll have uh, two different fingerings for this. So we start over the G chord, we've got a three note slur here on a down bow, third finger on the D string, a G note, low second finger F, open D, and then we're gonna play a D flat with our fourth finger on the G string. This is a two note slur on an up bow, the third finger C, then a two note slur here, uh, B flat to B natural, use your second finger. So that was two, two on the G string. And then open D, slur two here, open D to third finger on the D string. So. Okay, the other uh, blue notes that we have added are the flat five, that D flat, and then the flat three, which is B flat. Um, so we have a bunch of the notes. Actually, we have all the notes of the blue scale in there. G, C, D, D flat, C, and B flat. So it's descending blue scale there. So super bluesy sounding lick. Nice to incorporate that with the major third too though. A B natural is a major third over B. We play the B flat to the major third, the B flat to B natural. And that's another thing that's really characteristic in bluegrass is you hear that movement from the flat third, which is what you hear over the blue scale and more of a blue sound up to the major third. And that's constantly kind of going back and forth. You probably hear that more often in bluegrass than you do in straight blues music, which would have a tendency probably to stay more on just the flat third most of the time and make more of a pure blues scale, even over a major chord. Um, with bluegrass, you're gonna kind of go back and forth and utilize the major third with those blues scale lines. Okay, so that was over the G chord. Now over C, we're gonna do a different fingering, which we're gonna use later too to play it out of G. Second finger on the A string. So that's a C note. This is a three note slur. Low first finger, B flat. Third finger on the D string, a G. And we're gonna slur two on an up bow here. This is G flat to F. So that was low three to two. Then we're gonna do E flat to E. Uh, this is a three note slur, so we're gonna go E flat, E, G, or low one, one, three. And then second finger on the A string for C. So. All right, now when we play over the D chord, we'll use the same fingering that we used over the G chord. We're just gonna move it over to the A string. Same thing. Then over the G chord, I'm gonna go up an octave and use the C chord fingering that we just learned and move that over to the E string to play over G. Just to show you that you have two spaces or two places to play that lick that are both out of G. Okay, our next lick, this is one I've taught before but I thought it went well in this sequence of licks and if you haven't learned it yet, this is a good opportunity to learn it. We're going to learn it over some different chords too, which I haven't done yet. This is kind of a vaster Clements lick. Sounds like this. And then we do it over C. And then over D. And then back to G, just going down. Has a kind of a neat sound ending up um, going down instead of up. So uh, basically, we're using the same pattern for all of these, and I think pretty much 
We're, they're, they're all going to be four going down to two or three going down to one. There's, there's, there's a couple where we have two going down to open, but that's basically the, the pattern. And the first one over G, we start on the fifth of the chord, which is D, and that's with our fourth finger on the G string. These are all going to be slurred, four note slurs, okay? So you can start up or down, it doesn't really matter. Uh, four note slurs here, we're going to go f on the G string, four, low four, three, two. Now, I think Vassar actually did that differently, and he went four, high three, high two, one. So he used a different finger for each of those. And then that's what he, he would do from there on out. That works too. To me, it's more comfortable to do this kind of modified chromatic fingering where we use the same finger twice. Um, but different circumstances call for different fingering. So experiment with that idea. I'm going to say... Uh, as I teach it to you, it's probably easier to start with repeating the first finger that you start the phrase with, okay? So the next one, we start on the root of the chord, which is G, and that's third finger on the D string, and we're going to do another four note slur here, three, low three, two, uh, low two, one, so that was the G note down to an e, uh, e note, yes, chromatically, so the first one was uh, D down to B chromatically, now G to E chromatically, those are all chord tones. E note is the sixth of the chord. And then we're gonna do the same thing up an octave. This is gonna be a D on the A string. And we're gonna go three, low, three, two, one. And then lastly, over the G chord, we're gonna go two on E, which is a G note. We're gonna go two, low, two, one, open. So now we've got. Okay, so that was over the G chord. Now, when we start this over the C chord, we're gonna to go to our lowest note that would maintain this pattern. And so the lowest note we can go to that maintains that pattern is a C note, that's the root of the chord. So we've been starting the pattern either on the fifth of the chord, D, or the root of the chord, G. So now we're gonna start uh, over a C chord, the root of that chord is C, of course. So we'll start down here on the G string, and that was three, low, three, two, one, on the G string, starting on a C note. Then we're going to go over to the D string and start on the fifth of the chord, and that's going to be the same fingering, G down to E. So that's the fifth of the chord down to the uh, third of the chord. Then we'll do second finger on the A string, two, low, two, one, open, okay? And then same thing on the E string, two, low, two, one, open. So that's our C chord version. Of course, I could start this on the top of that pattern and go down and go to the G chord. There's no rules about that, and it's good to mix them up. Let's say I was having a faster chord change. Um, maybe it was a measure of G to a measure of C. <laughs> there, I, I switched them around. So a lot of fun, a good finger exercise, too to play around with this. Now over the D chord, we'll do the same thing. Fingerings here are gonna be the same uh, ones that we've used. Uh, fourth finger on <clears throat> the G string. So that's four, low four, three, two, and then same thing on the D string. Four, low four, three, two. Then on the A string, it's gonna be three, low three, two, one. Three, low three, two, one. Same thing on the E string. Three, low, three, two, one. So that fits over the D chord. Then to finish it off over the progression, I just did the descending version of it over the G chord, starting on the G note with the second finger on the E string. So there's our Vassar lick, and we're going to have three more licks. This is our last lick that doesn't involve double stops now. So this is one that um, is kind of a bluesy fiddle lick that, that would fit a lot of different tunes. Um, okay, that's our lick, and we're going to slide into a fourth finger on the E string. Uh, slide into a B flat, not a B natural, but a B flat. So we're going to slide in and out. So I'm sliding into the note and then down to an A note, kind of. It doesn't have to be real precise. Just sort of sliding in and out of the note and then going to second finger on the E string, a G note. 
Back to that B flat note with the fourth finger on the E string. I'm going to slur those two, so that's four down to low one F natural on the E string. Open E, slur three here, this is on a down bow. Third finger on the A string, D. Second finger, C. First finger, B. And then third finger on the D string, a G note. One of those good, uh, real feeling-oriented bluegrass licks. You can really just milk that slide for all it's worth and get into it. You know, if I've been playing a lot of eighth notes and just sort of, um, you know, jamming around kind of like fiddle tune style, this is a nice lick to disrupt that. Or... You know, doing something like that where I'm just playing a whole lot of notes that, um, you know, they might go with the chord really well and nothing wrong with that, but they don't really say a whole lot because I'm just sort of running up notes uh, up and down the scale and playing arpeggios. You know, if, if you're in that kind of improvisation for a long time, this is a good lick to disrupt that. Um, when we play it over the C chord, it'll have the same fingerings, just starting on the A string. <laughs> And over the D chord, of course, we're going to have to change that now, so it's going to be... All right, so that's a low first finger on the E string. We're going to slide in and out of that. Then third finger on the A string, a D note. Back to that low first finger, slur two here. We slurred first finger on E to second finger on A. Slur two on an up bow, first finger on the A string, a B note. Open A, third finger on the D string, a G note, second finger F sharp, then open D. Okay, and that finishes out our different chords, and then we would go back and play to finish out that sequence. Okay, now we're gonna get into some double stops and these are gonna be a little harder. So if you're not used to playing double stops and maybe you're more intermediate beginner type player, these might be a little tricky, but for you more advanced or intermediate advanced level players, double stops are at the heart of bluegrass music and we wanna, for fiddle, and we wanna use them every chance we get because they allow us to kind of rest and still play something interesting. Double stops, Anytime you play two notes on a fiddle, people just like that sound. I like that sound. It's fun to listen to. It's got a real magic to it, especially if you can play them in tune. <laughs> That's kind of the challenge. But uh, double stops are a big part stylistically of bluegrass and country fiddle. And uh, I think just in, of playing the fiddle in general, it's one of the things we can do really well that other instruments that have sustained notes can't usually do. So guitar can play two notes at the same time, mandolin can too, but they can't sustain those notes. So that's what is so special about that. Um, this lick sounds like this. It actually fits over two chords. We're gonna cover the G chord and the C chord with this lick. So this is actually a four measure lick. We've deviated from what I said we were gonna do. We're gonna have one that covers four measures going from G to C, and then four measures going from D back to G. We use the same lick, same fingering, so once we learn it here, we'll just move it over to the A and E strings. We're gonna be up in third position, and we're gonna slide into our third finger on the D string on a B note, and our first finger on the A string on a D note. Now on an up bow, we're gonna slur all this, I just did a little half step shift. The, those fingers, I moved them down a half step. So that's a D flat and a B flat. Back up to D natural and B natural. And then second finger is going to come down on E note. So. Okay, and then I'm going to. Um, And then I'm going to slur, and I'm going to come down with the same fingers. I'm going to play that third finger on a B note and first finger on a D note. I'm going to slide those fingers down on a down bow. 
to a G note on the D string and a B note on the A string. And it's a little tricky because the interval distance is not the same. Uh, B to D is a minor third, and we're going from that down to G to B, G and B together, which is a major third. So when we go to a major third, our fingers are actually a little bit closer together. When we play a minor third, they're further apart. So we're going to have to kind of bring our fingers just a little closer together as we come down. As long as you end up in the right place, that's all that matters. <laughs> And then to transition us to C, we're going to go down, this is on another two note slur here, first finger on the A string on a B note and second finger on the D string on the A F natural. And then we're gonna put our third finger down on the A string on a D note, keeping that F natural down too. Then two note slur here, uh, same double stop. Moving down to an E note with the first finger on the D string and second finger on the A string is C note. And then, so that was a three note slur. Uh, first finger in the middle of the D and A strings to get an E and a B. Back to second finger on C on the A string. And then third finger on D. And then back to second finger on C. E note on the D string stayed down that whole time. So here's the whole lick. And we're going to just move that over to the DNA strings and do exactly the same thing. Same thing. So <laughs> easy enough. And then our last lick, this is a very classic bluegrass double stop lick. I don't know who did it first. I would guess either Benny Martin or Scotty Stoneman. Um, they both did licks like this. They both had similar styles. I, I think, I'm going to say probably Benny Martin because I think Benny Martin was recorded first and was probably more widely recognized first before Scotty Stoneman just from what I have researched um, and the fact that Benny Martin played with Flatt & Scruggs, which was a huge national act, not right away, but you know they reached prominence pretty quickly and had been playing with Bill Monroe. And then Benny Martin also became a little bit of a, more of a country star actually as a singer, uh, just briefly in the 50s. Um, Scotty Stoneman was really big too, but I think his, from what I can tell, his fame was just a little bit after that, just slightly. I think they were probably around the same age. Uh, and Scotty Stoneman may have even been older. I'm not. I'm not really sure. But I think Benny Martin probably came first, and and maybe is who this lick came from. But let's hear the lick. It sounds like this. <laughs> Might not sound as familiar um, if you hear it fast. It's gonna sound like Scotty Stoneman. Of course, lots of variations on that, but that's the basic lick. So another one I thought went well with this sequence of licks here. And what I'm doing, I'm, I'm gonna play all of these. I'm gonna start on a down bow. Everything is just saw stroke bow, and kind of closer to the frog when you play it faster. Doesn't sound so good at that medium speed, but if I speed it up, that's really where that lick needs to live. It's a fast lick, and it's great at filling up space when you can't think of anything else to do. It's very exciting, so it's a good filler in that when you use it, you know it's going to get a good result if you can if you can pull it off. And um, it's not super hard to do. I don't I don't think it. You know, compared to the one we just did, it's not as sensitive with the tuning because it's so fast. So what we're going to do is play a low third finger on a D flat to a and, and a second uh, finger on the E string low as well on a, a G flat, and then just move that up to a D and a G. Then play open E and open A. This is your kind of ghosted, so they don't have to be played really loud. I'm not going like that. Just real, real ghosted. And then we're going to go over to the uh, D and A strings and do kind of the same idea, but with a different double stop. 
These are notes that are part of the G chord still. This is third finger on the D string on a G note, uh, actually G flat, and first finger on the A string on a B flat. We're gonna shift that up as well to G and B natural. So. After you do that, you'll play a ghosted open D and open A. And ghosted just means that I'm not hitting that note particularly hard. Um, it's really just there kind of as a rhythmic place keeper so my bow can keep moving. So and when I play it at the faster tempo, can't even really hear those notes. It's not that I'm not playing them, I'm just not playing them very loud. Okay, now over C, we'll do the exact same thing. We're just gonna move it over to the DNA strings and then move that lower one to the G and D strings. <laughs> and then when we play over D, we're gonna use the same fingering but up in second position. So pretend like you're in C again. Just moving that up. Um, basically, a, um, our starting point is up a half step from G and C. So we're starting on... You could think of that as A flat and D flat, or G sharp and C sharp. And then raise it up a half step, and now we're over that D and A note that actually fit with that chord. A lot easier to play it with that fingering up in second position. Uh, so that's why we've done that. And this fingering also lets you move this around really easily. So I could do, you know, the G one. A. A flat. Uh, B flat. B. <laughs> Wherever you want to do it. It's, 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 it's a lot of fun, really. There's E. There's E. A. D. G. C. See, I can just move around the circle of fifths there. Um, so that fingering is super easy to move around. And again, it's a it's a good just kind of kind of exciting look if you're playing something at a really fast tempo. If I'm, you know, playing something. There we go. <laughs> All right, so the last thing I want to do is just show you one way you might string some of these licks together. And let's do the first one. And then I'm going to go to the second one for the C chord. And I'll do that last double stop lick. So here we go uh, over that same progression. Um, here's the G lick. C lick number two. <laughs> I'll do that again. <laughs> So what I did there was I kind of added that other double stop lick and just sort of shortened it. And so that was just to give you an idea of how those licks could fit together. If I take lick number one over a G chord and lick number two over a C chord and then the very last one that we did over the D chord and just sort of mix and match, you can almost come up with a solo just with these licks.